It Came From The Desert tells the story of Lizard Breath, a small American town which is suddenly invaded by giant ants. This should be fun, eh? Anyway, insects. Where would the science fiction movies of the 50s be without them? I mean, the incredible shrinking man would have looked a bit of a shandy drinker if he'd been fighting a rather large mouse. The game begins with some awesome opening credits. The eye wanders over a multi-way horizontally scrolling and magnificently animated desert landscape, while a voice informs us about a biblical prophecy with which disaster begins. Prophecy come true that one day the meek shall inherit the earth. Lizard Breath, California, a small town in the backwater of cultural development and the current base of geologist Dr. Greg Bradley. He's cut short his vacation to study the remains of a large meteorite, which crashed in the nearby mountains a week ago. Nothing much ever happens in this one lizard town, so the town folk here are thrilled by it, but their excitement is soon to turn to horror. You see, the meteorite was extremely radioactive and affected the local wildlife in a literally massive way. The sleepy town of Lizardbreath is about to be attacked by giant ants. In this tribute to 1950s B-movies, you play the part of Greg, attempting to destroy the ants before they reach the town. Your first problem is that, unsurprisingly, no one believes you. Four pieces of solid evidence must be collected, such as a plaster cast of a creature's tracks, a recording of creature sounds, creature fluids, and a creature part. Then, you need to convince the mayor into calling out the National Guard. But to know where to look for evidence, you'll first have to talk to people about some recent, strange occurrences. You can phone people from your home and most other buildings, or alternatively, visit them at their place of work, although they may be out, usually at the pub. Travelling is generally done by a car, and a scrolling map shows all the locations with the estimated time of arrival for each. You see, you can't afford to waste time, as you only have 15 days to save the town. Once a location is selected, you are automatically transported there. That is, unless you run into the local gang, the Hellcats, who will challenge you to an extremely dangerous game of chicken. In an arcade sequence, your car speeds towards the Hellraisers, the loser being the car which chickens out and swerves off the road. On arrival at the chosen location, you are greeted with a static picture and a text window showing your current thoughts. If anyone's there, they'll usually talk to you, sometimes giving you useful information. One very helpful character is Professor Wells, a scientist at the local university who can analyse any evidence given to him. Other important characters include a female radio DJ and the police sergeant. However, some of these people are not so friendly and may even challenge you to a knife fight. A visit to the airfield allows you to survey the town from overhead. The plane is equipped with a limited amount of chemical spray to use on any ant scene. Fuel is also limited and must be carefully watched so that you have enough to get back to the airfield. If not, you can try crash landing in the desert or on a road. Flying is also necessary to get the recording of creature sounds. For some of the required evidence, you'll need first-hand contact with the ants. They usually hang out around the mine shafts or volcano craters. A massive ant crawls across the screen. You must aim your gun at it and hopefully destroy it before it attacks. However, if you kill it, the view switches to an overhead one and you are chased by more angry ants. This time, you can use grenades against them. Kill enough ants and the rest will run away. If at any time you get injured by an ant, knife fight, plane crash, etc., you'll be sent to the hospital. Any treatment here wastes valuable time, so the usual course of action is to try and escape. In an overhead view sequence, you must try to get to the ground floor and out of the front door. If they spot you, the doctors and nurses will chase you 
and if they catch you, stick a large hypodermic needle you know where. Luckily, you can hide under desks and in spare beds, and you can even find a wheelchair for extra speed. This part of the game is particularly memorable for many, I'm sure. That's the guy. Get him. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. That's him. Ultimately, to save the town, you must find the opening to the nest and destroy the queen. If you haven't achieved this by day 15, you will have to defend the town from an all-out attack. The mayor will call a general alert. He is finally convinced when one of these ants eats his car and will allow you to organize the defenses. You can allocate town folk, construction workers, soldiers and police to any location under siege. You can then leave them to it or go to help in another overhead arcade sequence. Here you can enter and control any of the army tanks. Jet strikes can also be ordered from the general alert map. If you successfully defend the town, you can have another crack at the ant's nest. Otherwise, it's the end of Lizard's Breath. Considering the number of different elements in the game, it all hangs together very well. And though I remember the original game involving a fair amount of disc swapping, it was certainly worth the hassle. All the sections are really well programmed and great fun to play, and the variety means that it's virtually impossible to get bored. It Came From The Desert has brilliant atmosphere and tons of effort has gone into making sure that everything is correct. It's funny and spooky in turn and the music, which is an excellent pastiche of the kind of soundtrack you find on all those old black and white movies, is perfect. It is a lavishly put together package, with quality throughout. The incredible startup sequence is a testament to that. Sonic effects and tunes, as mentioned, are of the usual excellent CinemaWare standard, with the samples being of top quality, and even the sub-games are great games in their own right. A lot of thought has obviously gone into the game structure, and as such, no two games follow the same path, with random events cropping up frequently. You really do have to work to find the evidence, fight off the ants, and convince the lizard breath citizens that the damn thing exists. Great stuff. Winning the game is going to take a while, but once you have, you can get yourself ready for its sequel. I'll be covering that on the channel too. Thanks for watching guys, isn't this such an awesome game? Hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of any upcoming videos just like this to unlock some more great nostalgic memories from the games we loved growing up. Or maybe this is your first time playing on the Commodore Amiga and are intrigued to know what other games came out for this awesome machine. Stick around and let's continue on this journey, revisiting all of the best memories that the Commodore 64 and Amiga gave us. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, bye for now.